sports dietitian. There are not many sports dietitians out there, especially here in Manitoba. And I work directly with the Canadian Sports Center out at the U of M. And as well as I do a ton of work for Sport Manitoba, both sitting as president for the Sport Medicine and Science Council of Manitoba, and uh, I am the co-chair for the Dietitians of Canada Sport Nutrition Network. And if recently, and I am the only one in Manitoba that has completed the International Olympic Committee Diploma in Sport Nutrition. So I do know a lot about sport nutrition, supplements to food, timing, all that kind of stuff. So if you have questions, let me know. A lot of you are going to be at various levels. I just asked one guy, he said he hasn't had a sport nutrition talk before. How many of you have? Okay. Those of you that have, great. You can uh, help me out and maybe chat when other people are not going to be so chatty. That would be helpful. Um, and those of you that have had a sport nutrition talk before, how many of you have a sport nutrition plan in place? start with first, and then I'm going to start with a bit of an icebreaker, and because it is a big group, we're not going to actually go through teams or anything like that, but I'm going to go through about 15 questions. They start off really basic, they're not hard, they're not trick questions, well, most of them are not trick questions, and uh, I'm going to ask for your participation. So I'm going to go through um, the questions and we'll go through the 15 real quick, and then we're going to go through the answers after. Does that sound okay? Even if it doesn't, we're doing that anyway. Okay, so here we go. So kind of keep a mental score for yourself to see where you are. And again, it starts basic and we're going to move into more sport nutrition. So first question, how many food groups are there in Canada's food guide? If you don't know this, you can't move anywhere from there. Knowing where key nutrients are is essential. Do you go above Canada's food guide? Absolutely, but you have to know the basics. So how many food groups are there? Okay. Number two, we're going to go through them real quick and then I'm going to go through the answers. Hydrating every 15 to 20 minutes during a practice or in a game is recommended, true or false? Lack of fluids, inattention to food choices can impair physical performance, true or false? Don't worry, it gets a little bit more thought. What's the best way for you guys to get protein in your meal plan? Meat and alternatives and milk products? Protein shakes, protein bars, or is protein not that important for you as an athlete? <laughs> okay. so. Energy drinks, Rockstar, Red Bull, Full Throttle, Monster, all those sort of things. These are safe and good ways to increase energy during training and, and during competition. True or false? How many of you don't mind the taste? Tastes kind of like sweet tart candies. They're just not that bad for taste. How soon should an athlete start to refuel and recover after a training session or after a game? Within 60, 40, 90, or 15 minutes? So all of you are in the growing de developmental stage. Based on the level of training that you're doing, do you need to have supplements to help meet the requirements? The level of training that you're doing. Do you need supplements, true or false? What dietary component is the most important during the course of a training session? So you're in exercise mode. What are you going to focus on? Protein, fat, carbs, fluid, or CMD? <laughs> What's the best method to bulk up or um, more importantly, not necessarily bulk up, that should be changed more into increasing lean muscle mass. Body composition in sport, the higher the level you go, not weight, so weighing yourself isn't gonna tell me your body composition, but in terms of increasing the lean muscle mass, functional muscle, not like, you know, meat heads that can't move because they got all that muscle, but functional muscle. What's the best way to do that? Creatine, resistance training, protein supplements, or steroid use? <laughs> Muscle cramps are caused by not enough salt. True or false? <laughs> if you don't eat enough in the training or in a game, what can happen? Your performance decreases, higher risk for injury, Increased illness or all of the above? 
Almost done. Which macronutrient, so there's macro and micro, so which macronutrient provides quick energy for muscle activity in sport? Fat, protein, carbs, or iron? Look at your muscle working. <coughs> <laughs> Carbohydrates are found in how many food groups in Canada's food guide? Very important. I know you want to roll your eyes when you hear Canada's food guide. Don't blame you. But you need to know where you're getting your carbs from. So how many food groups contain carbohydrate? One, two, three, or four? The pre-training, the pre-event meal or um, snack, whatever, should be mostly. Carbs, protein, fat, carbs, protein, and fat. And finally, how much time does it take to fully digest your pre-event, pre-training, pre-competition meal? 20 minutes, 60 minutes, 2 hours? It depends on what kind of meal you eat. <laughs> All right. You guys excited? You're ready to go? Okay, so number one, how many food groups are there? Five, four, four, five, four, 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 so who can name the food groups? And I won't make you do say them in order, but fruits and vegetables. Okay, that's one. Meat and dairy. Meat and dairy. So you wouldn't want to say just dairy, because a lot of people that are lactose intolerant are allergic. So what would it be called? Milk no, and alternatives. Grains. Grains. And meat and alternatives. Meat and alternatives. Exactly. So those are the four. Now I tend to give different names for the food groups because. When, if someone were to say to you, eat your vegetables, you'd probably like, roll your eyes and know I don't eat my vegetables. Who really cares? So I figure most of us as human beings are selfish people. We do things because there's something in it for us. That's, that's how we are. That's fine. But if, we're, if I'm going to get you guys to have a buy-in into at least starting with the food guide and then building it into a really high-level sport nutrition plan, I've changed the names of the food groups. To so The first one being vegetables and fruit boring, whatever. Those are now, as an athlete, those are your, that's your superfoods. So it's no longer called vegetables and fruit, it's called superfoods. And most of you need at least eight servings a day. Eight servings a day. And the reason is these foods are jam-packed with antioxidants, with nutrition. They do have carbohydrate, they have fluid in them. So this is what's going to help build and repair your body, keep your immune system strong. Those of you that travel with sport also know that the C word can happen called constipation. So you need to make sure that that's not happening. It's not comfortable, right? Don't worry, this is not bloatation, this is baby, so don't worry about that. Um, but when you are bloated and, and feeling that way, you're not gonna perform your best. It's something that can get in the way. Something as little as that can be a big deal. So you wanna make sure that you do get that fiber content in. So superfoods are really important. Again, starting with about eight. Some of you guys are gonna to need to go up to 10, 12 servings a day, depending on your training level. Then the next food group is not grains, well it is, but I call them energizers. And the energizers are really important. They are also carbohydrates. It's a huge fuel source. Fuel your brain, fuel your muscle. You need to have carbs in. They also are, contain B vitamins, which helps the body utilize our energy system. So getting the grains in, very important, your energizers, and how many servings do you think you need in a day as an athlete? Six, six, five, 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 eight six, to ten. Four, and you're going to use these servings, I'm going to go through that. You're going to use these servings as your money for the day. That's how you're going to use the servings. You've got eight dollars to spend or eight servings to spend. Right? So i got to try and keep your attention that way. So that, that's the second food group. The next one, milk and alternatives. Sure, but they're also bone builders and bone supporters. As an athlete, you need to get enough calcium in, vitamin D in your diet. So you need to make sure that you're getting this in. The milk and alternatives also contain protein, which is very important for an athlete. How many servings a day do you think you need of this food group? 
Eight. On average, most of you, the females probably three to four. The guys probably about four to six, depending on your training level at the time. Then finally, the one that the guys think should be the highest servings in a day, your meat alternatives, also known as builders and repairs. Meat alternatives contain what? Protein. Protein. What else? Iron. Iron. Very important for females. Yeah, builders and repairs. Because the level of activity that you guys are doing is not going to be the same as, um, say, mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, uh, Aunt Betty, whoever it is. Um, they're exercising for health, right? You guys are training to become crazy human specimens of nature. Like it, that's what you're training for. So you are breaking your body down, and if you don't have the right fuel, not so much enough fuel in the day, but enough fuel at the right time, you're not gonna be as good as you could be. Most of you are here because you're talented. Nutrition, having a sport nutrition plan isn't gonna make you a talented athlete. It can't do that. You train hard, naturally. Some of you are just gifted in the sport. But nutrition can take you to the next level. You're gonna recover quicker. Decrease risk of injury, build and repair, right? Keep that immune system strong. Instead, when you get to competition time and you feel like you're a sore throat, getting a little sniffly, instead of that happening, you're going to be stronger and ready to go. Decrease that risk of injury. If you're injured, are you training? Probably not. If you are, probably not at the level you should be. If you're not training, if you're not developing, you're not, you're not progressing, so you're not going to play. The sport nutrition is at least 50% of sport performance. Some research shows that it's about 90%. So very, very important. So that's Canada's food guide for an athlete. Number two. Oh, about at least two servings for the females, three to four in general for you. And when you're in heavy training, days off, it's going to be different. So in your sport nutrition plan, you need a day off nutrition plan. You need an in training nutrition plan and you need a competition nutrition plan because training how you eat and, and hydrate is going to be different than a, a competition day. So you need three different types of sport, uh, sport nutrition plans to happen. But you don't have to try and change the world in one day. I'm going to show you how to start building that and the next time when we meet you guys are actually going to learn how to develop a nutrition plan just for you as an individual athlete. That's going to take some work so you guys are going to need uh, a pen, pencil, paper, calculators. You're gonna, I'm going to have you guys develop that. Um, it's kind of like what people pay me to do. I'm going to have you guys. I'm going to teach you guys how to do that. All right. Hydrating every 15 to 20 minutes during practice and games is recommended. True or false? True. How many of you do that? How many feel that it's pretty hard because in terms of what you're doing for that training session, you can't always go, sorry coach, I'm just going to go drink. So this is textbook knowledge. Textbook versus reality don't always match up, right? So you need to make sure that if you, you're not going to be able to, every 15 to 20 minutes, take one to two gulps of fluid. One gulp at your age of, of water or sport drink is going to be about one ounce of fluid. So if you don't think that you're going to be able to do that, what can you do that's under your control to make sure you're well hydrated? Yeah, that's your question. I promise you guys. You drink before. About two hours before your practice or your game, you need about two cups of fluid. Okay? And that's going to help you stay hydrated. But whenever you can, get off to the sidelines, take a gulp or two. Of fluid. If you want to know your hydration status, how much fluid do you lose during a training session, and the only time I think a scale is beneficial for us anyway, is to weigh yourself before and after. Dry weight, for example, I went to work with swimming and I weighed them before their two hour training session and weighed them after, and I calculated their fluid loss and how much fluid they should have had during training and then for their recovery. So that's something that you can choose to do as well, is weigh yourself before and after, and for every uh, pound that you've lost, you need to replace with about two to three cups of fluid. It's very important. Hydration is one of the main reasons for poor performance in sport across the board. So make sure that you're well hydrated. So lack of fluids and intention.
attention to food choices can impair physical performance to or false? <laughs> so what happens? You're, you're in a training session and you're dehydrated. What's happening? You guys know. It's when you're dehydrated, what? how do you feel? What's happening? Crappy. Absolutely. Well, what else? What else? Tired. 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 Yes, you're fatigued, oh. you're tired. Slowing down. You can be cramping up. Dry mouth. Not thinking straight. Right? All these things, you guys know this stuff. I'm not asking you trick questions. So you need to make sure that you're going to hydrate before, during, and after. Very important. So what's the best way for you guys to get protein in your meal plan? A, B, C, or D. A. So why did you choose that other than you think it's what I want to hear? Why did you choose that? So I'm not against protein shakes and protein bars. I put them into meal plans all the time. Why would this be the best way? Well, your parents would say because it's cheaper. Protein is one of the most expensive parts of a nutrition plan, for sure. When might you want to use a protein shake or a bar, though? No. When, 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 when you get in a rush, when you don't work it out? In a rush that possibly, sometimes in a rush just means you didn't plan, but possibly. For energy, uh, protein wouldn't be your main source of energy. You look at carbohydrate when you're training, you're using blood, depending on your intensity level, you use carbohydrate and fat as your main energy sources. So protein wouldn't be your primary source of energy. But shakes and bars, um, if you're really nervous before an event and eating whole food, you think just won't sit well, I'd rather you have a liquid meal replacement, make a shake, have a, have a bar, eat half of a bar. You, if you feel that you need something to keep you full longer, or if timing is an issue, if you're traveling, packing your, those bars can be helpful when you're traveling. But you need to make sure you've tried them in training so that when you go into competition, one, if you don't like it, you're not going to eat it. Two, not everyone tolerates the same amount of food or the same types of foods. So anything that you're going to eat or drink in competition, you have to have tried in training. So again, I'm not against the supplements, the bars and the shakes, but um, I, I think that you need to really look at food choices first. If you get, um, and this is not a trick question, everyone always looks at me like, what? If you had a scoop of protein powder, and mix that in your water, what are you getting? Yeah. Protein, right? <laughs> protein powder, yeah. So you're getting some protein powder. If you had, um, let's say, a chicken salad sandwich, what are, you ha what are you getting out of that? You're getting protein, you're getting zinc, you're getting iron, you're getting carbohydrate, you're getting B12, you're getting a whole bunch of nutrients that you're not gonna get in that supplement. So supplements are there to enhance the nutrition plan, they're not there to replace, okay? And more protein does not mean more muscle. I'll show you in, uh, in another couple slides uh, in terms of what happens when you have too much protein. It's not gonna kill you, but it's not gonna be a, be a benefit either. Energy drinks, Rockstar, Red Bull, are safe and good ways to increase energy. Oh. Oh. Why? Sugar. Sugar, some of them, some of them are sugar free, but some of them do have a high concentration of sugar that doesn't go well with exercise. You can crash. You can crash. Possibly caffeine. If you're used to caffeine, it won't dehydrate you, but for some of you, it's going to make you have to feel like you got to pee every five minutes, for sure. What else? What, why, why, why else would this not be a, a great tool? Pardon me? Yeah, I mean, caffeine can be helpful. It might make your brain a little bit more alert. If you're already an anxious person and you add caffeine to that, it's probably not going to be a good thing for you, right? The other part is not so much the caffeine, because if you got had a regular size Red Bull, that's 80 milligrams of caffeine. Go to Starbucks and get a grande coffee, that's 200. Right, so it's not necessarily the caffeine component that is the huge issue for me. Uh, the, the main issue for me is what else is in there that they're not claiming to be there, because it's not regulated like food, 
And the other part is, what, do you, what's, what are they saying is there, is it really a, in an effective dose? For example, there might be some amino acids added to it. If you look at it, the amount that, it, that is in there, you'd have to have you know, like 100 of these energy drinks before you get a proper dose. And at your age group, um, typically the ACSM and uh, Dietitians Canada, American Dietetic Association, sport medicine in general doesn't recommend for supplement use for um, under 18. So you just want to be careful with that. If any of you are on medication, natural doesn't always mean safe. Herbal products can interact with medications. So if you're not sure and that's something that you are want to incorporate into your sport nutrition plan, I would say go to your local pharmacist, say, hey, this is my medication, this is the herbal products in here, are there any interactions? And the other part is also doping safety, right? You don't want to be tested for a bad substance, so you want to be cautious with that. So I, I don't recommend the energy drinks. If you need a cup of coffee, if you need a Dr. Pepper, whatever, you can include that into your sport nutrition plan. But making sure that you know what you're putting into your body, you have to be accountable. How soon should you start to refuel and recover after training? 15 minutes. Anyone else? Ideally within the first 15 to 30 minutes is great. If you miss that window of opportunity, you're, you're not messed up. You, you still should consume something as soon as you can. But when you develop a sport nutrition plan, you're going to be ready to go before you leave the gym, before you leave the training session, the competition. You should have had your recovery snack started. And then when you get home, you can have a small meal depending, or a regular size meal depending on what time everything is why should you have something within that window of opportunity, that first 15 to 30 minutes? Basically what's happening is your body is able to metabolize everything really quickly, so you're able to break down that carbohydrate and it goes to refuel the muscle. After about an hour and a half, two hours of intense exercise, You've depleted your muscle of glycogen stores and you need to replace that. Especially if you guys play tournaments? Yes. So, and if you have more than one training session in a day? Yeah. So, this time frame is really crucial. If you don't have 24 hours to replenish, you need that window of opportunity to fill up again so that way you're ready to go. So, that's why that window of opportunity is, is highly recommended. So the level of activity that you guys are doing, should you be supplementing? Vitamin, mineral, protein? Oh. Some of you may need to. Um, I know that there's a certain age groups, especially with females, where you tend to be a little bit more restrictive, and that's uh, really unfortunate because for your level of activity, you need to, and you should be happy that you get to eat a lot of food fantastic um, but supplements typically are not needed for most of you because with higher levels of activity usually comes a larger appetite which means you're going to eat more that said um, those of you that are finicky eaters uh, picky eaters uh, some of you that may have uh, allergies and tolerances you might need to supplement female athletes might need to supplement with iron um, during certain times of the month, we're not going to go into a sex ed class. But I'm just saying that for some of female athletes are at higher risk for iron deficiency, which helps with oxygen flow. And if you don't have that good oxygen flow, you're going to also feel quite fatigued. So you should have, all of you that end up being high level athletes, should have regular blood work done annually for sure. If you have been anemic or low iron, probably every six months is a good idea to get your blood tested. All right. What's the most important during the course of a training session? So in exercise, when you're working out, what are you going to focus on? CFD. Why not protein and fat? <laughs> yeah. Protein and fat are great for making you feel fuller longer, but they take longer to break down. You need quick fuel and you need to rehydrate. What else would you focus in on in, in ex during exercise? electrolytes. Right? How many of you use sport drinks? Yes. And 
why do you want to use a sports drink? Electrolytes. Also, you've got carbohydrate in there, right? And you also have the fluid component, the hydration. So you, that, is, that is pretty important to consider. If you can't eat during exercise, which some of us can't, then a sport drink would be helpful when you're training at an intense level and for more than an hour, hour and a half time frame, then some, some carbohydrate would be helpful. So how are you going to increase your lean muscle mass? Steroids could work, um, but if you want to stay in your sport, probably not a good choice. <laughs> Does creatine work? Yeah. What's creatine? What is this? It's legal. It is legal. What it's is not a banned substance. Um, creatine, we actually do produce it on our own, and you get most of it from meat products. And uh, what it has shown is to help with um, uh, strength in terms of stop and go sport, which you would have. The only thing is, is we don't recommend creatine supplementation again uh, under 18 years of age. We, one is because we don't know what it'll do to you or what it won't do to you because ethically we're not going to test a supplement like that on someone younger. So um, is it safe on your age group? We have no free food. We don't know. We don't know. Um, what does help at your age though is to make sure that you have consistent quality training that you have proper rest and recovery time, not staying up all night, texting, playing games, listening to music that is not restful, um, and, and also having a good nutritional plan to support the activity level that you have. Those three things have been tried and true in all levels. I have athletes at the national level that do not use a single supplement, not even protein powders, because they're kind of freaked out about um, being tested for a bad substance, although protein powders are typically fine. But in terms of creatine, obviously steroids are not legal. And females, not good for us. And guys, you know, if you want to have kids later on or just, you know, have that relationship, you probably want to stay away from that as well. <laughs> so really good resistance training for a ramp. And it doesn't mean you have to go pump like a whole bunch of weights, but resistance training based on your age level and what your coach and trainer feel are, are appropriate for your level of development. Number 10, muscle cramps caused by inadequate salt intake. True. So are, are your muscle cramps always caused by not enough salt? Uh, this is a bit of a trick question. Is it? Dirty. Not always. It could be partially related to low sodium. How many of you are heavy sweaters? When you work out, you're sweating like crazy, right? We're not pretty, but it happens, right? So if you're a heavy sweater and you're noticing that you're cramping up, it could be related. So what you would do, is add some sodium into that training session. And if you are a really heavy sweater, you'll know that because your, your clothes will have a discoloration on them from sweating. It could be a white film on your neck. Um, and that is definitely a sign that you, that you might need to replace more. And if you're already having a sport drink, what could you do to add sodium content if that sport drink's not working for you? Yeah, add another pinch. And a pinch because if you keep on adding more, you're not going to drink it, it's going to taste pretty bad. Or have some salted pretzels, some salted crackers, something that's going to add some salt into so you keep that fluid balance. But cramps can be from what other reasons? Why might you cramp up? Not enough water. Not enough water. Dehydration. Bananas. 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 Anything else? It could be a, a technique that you might not have down properly, so you'd have to talk to your coach and trainer to try and correct the technique. So there's a lot of reasons, not just sodium content. So if you're not eating enough, what happens? All of you. How many of you have experienced going to a training session and not eating for about you know, four or five hours beforehand? And then how many of you have, have eaten about two hours beforehand and have noticed a difference? There is a huge difference. And if you haven't noticed, um, just ask the people around you. They'll let you know that you've been a little bit more moody or not taking direction well. Your coach will definitely let you know. Like, what's wrong with you? Have, are you PMSing him? No, I mean, because you can't PMS. Um, it's, it's because you haven't had enough fuel, right? So very important to eat. Please don't think you are. 
Um, which macronutrient provides quick energy for muscle activity? Carbs. Yeah, and where do carbs come from? Carbs. <laughs> Bread. So your greens, energizers, where else? Your milk and alternatives? Sport drinks or supplementation? Fruit? Gummy bears? Right, some are more nutritional value than others. So carbs are really important. So how many food groups? I was trying to make jam to this one. Two or three. Two or three? How about in the back? Doodlers and bacon people? vegetables like corn and potatoes. Um, you're going to get them from your grains or your energizers, from your milk and alternatives. What about meat alternatives though? What about from a steak? Are you going to get carbs from a steak? Yes. No. Yeah. No. But how come I'm saying all four food groups? Alternatives. Not from an egg? <laughs> your alternatives. Beans, lentils, those, those ones are going to get give you some carbohydrate source. But your main carbs are going to come from your first three food groups and then your uh, sports drinks, supplements like that. Pre-training, pre-event. Should be mostly, and you guys should know this by now, we kind of talked about it. index eating because that's going to be really important too for you guys. I don't want to go too much today. Finally, how much time does it take to fully digest your pre-training, pre-event meal? D. 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 Exactly. So that's Sport Nutrition 101. How do you guys feel? Great. Feel pretty good? Great. If you were to leave today, would you feel like you could go and do and, and plan your sport nutrition plan? No, 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 no not yet. Not yet. And that's what I would think. Not so Which is good because I have more to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we've gone through just some of the basics, what are some of your questions right now? If you were to leave and go, okay, blank, I don't even know where to start. Why? What 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 do you feel you're lacking? In order to develop to develop a sport nutrition plan, what is a serving? What is a serving? Okay, so we'll talk about that. So we're going to go back to basics. You guys got to know the basics, otherwise you can't go anywhere. Okay. What else? 
Do you guys know what to have for recovery? Do you guys know what you need pre, during, and recovery? Do you have ideas? Do you know how to, do you guys know how to do any basic cooking? Can you boil water? Yeah. Yes. Okay, we can go a long way. Excellent. Do you know how to turn the stove on? Excellent. So if you can do some of those, I'm going to show you some of the recipes. How many of you, first thing in the morning, the idea of eating makes you feel kind of sick? It used to for me. Yeah. So you're going to have to plan around that because every meal and snack, you guys should be eating at least six to eight times a day. Every meal and snack has to come into play. So if you're someone that has a low appetite for about an hour after a training session, some people lose appetite after exercise. So if you're someone like that, you've got to figure out how you're going to get that nutrition in. If you're someone that doesn't like getting up earlier, the thought of eating first thing in the morning doesn't make you feel good, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get through that. So that's important. So pre, during, and recovery nutrition. Even days that you're at school all day. I know a lot of females skip their lunch because it's important to socialize and, and uh, sometimes you're just not really thinking about why you need to have that meal. You can't skip meals to be a high level athlete. You can't. So you're gonna have to figure out how to do that. So let's talk about servings real quick. How are we for time? <laughs> so let's talk about fruit and vegetables first, your superfoods. This is about a cup of blueberries, okay? This one cup of blueberries is two servings. Just because something is more than a serving doesn't mean you stop there. Okay, you guys need a lot of fuel. It's important to, to consume enough in a day. So if half a cup is a serving and you have a full cup, you don't go, oh my goodness, I, I ate too much. No, you need that. That's important. A large banana. That's two servings. This looks like something you probably don't want to eat, but when I, this is raisins, this is one tablespoon. Two tablespoons is a serving of fruit. And yes, I did uh, play a joke on some people at work one day and put this on their chair. Oh. Yeah, I know. Give it to you. Medium sized fruit of any sort. That's going to be one serving. Vegetables are important. You guys should be having at least one serving of a dark green vegetable every day because of the nutrients that are in there. So half a cup. Half a cup is one serving. That's half a cup. That's half a cup. All right. Unless it's going to be something like salad, then one cup is a serving. Okay. What about tomato juice? You guys wanted to have some tomato juice. How much is a serving? Half a cup. Half a cup is one serving. Most of you are not going to stop there. Measure of half a cup, that's not very much. It's 125 milliliters, four ounces. So if you're having a full cup, that's two servings. The only thing is when you have the fruit juice, you're typically not getting everything. You're losing a little bit of nutrition through the processing, and you're not going to get that fiber component, unless you're buying the orange juice with that extra pulp in there, and you'll get it. So that's your superfoods. Then your grains. This is rice. Did you have a question? What about watermelon? Yeah, about, if you sliced it up, about uh, half a cup would be a serving. Yeah. Any other questions on vegetables and fruit? Yeah, you said this is not enough, of, but that's good. That's my point. This is one serving. But if you stop there, that's not going to be great for you guys. As an athlete, you need to eat enough. And remember I said your carbohydrate servings in a day? That's your money. Any of you have your own debit card, your internet card, where you can take money out, right? If, if um, let's pretend I had lots of money and I took you guys to Mall of America and we were going shopping and uh, we all had, let's let's pretend we, had, we all had um, $400 or 400 grams of carbs in our account. So $400 doesn't go that far. If I went to a store and I saw a pair of jeans for you know, $180, and then there was a sweater for $200, my money's almost gone, and then I go and have a meal, and then I go and buy maybe a, a, another uh, sweater or something, that my money's gone. You guys decide you're going to scope out a bunch of stores first. So when we get to midday, I'm crusty, I'm mad, because I'm all done, I've spent my money, and I just want to go, and you guys have enough to keep going for a while yet, so 
I need to make sure now I go back to work so I can put money back into my bank account. So whatever you're going to take out from your bank account, whatever you're going to burn off through exercise and training, you need to replace so you don't go into a deficit. So it's really important that when I'm talking about these food groups, you don't just kind of throw it out the window that, oh, this is Canada's food guide. For an athlete, it's much more than Canada's food guide. It's your main fuel, it's your money to be able to you know, keep going, to be able to compete at a high level. If you think of your competition, if they have good quality coaching, if they are getting proper rest and recovery, and if they're getting the same information in terms of sport and nutrition, what's going to be the deal breaker? It's going to be just like those of you in this group today. Some of you are taking information from here and you're going to actually apply it. Some of you are hearing some of it, but you're not going to do anything with it. Others are not even hearing it. So same thing with your competition. The difference between you and them is who's taking this information and who's going to actually put it into action. Who's going to apply it. So keep in mind that these foods, there's a reason why you guys need them. I'm not saying don't have the sweets and um, high calorie foods and things like that. That's all part of healthy living, quality of life. But you need to support your body first and the other things can come in after. So the, going on again, this is pasta. That's one serving. That would be like two bites for some of you, right? So again, that's about half a cup once it's cooked. A full cup would be two servings. Some of you are going to need about four servings at one meal, for sure, just to support what you need. We need a size baked potato. This goes in the vegetables and fruit section, but it's starchy. So I put it on with your grains and starches. Do you have a question? Does it matter if all the servings are like spread out through the day, or can you just have them like all the time? For an athlete, you definitely want to make sure that you're surrounding them around your training. So if you had um, two training sessions, let's say you had a morning one and then an evening session, you need to make sure that you're eating before and after the first session, and then throughout maybe a meal and, and a snack or two. And then you have to eat again maybe an hour or two beforehand, and then within 15, 30 minutes after that second one. So you, you really want to build your nutrition, nutrition plan around your schedule. And then that's typically, if I were to sit down with you and work on a one-on-one, -on -one, the first thing I'm going to do is you're going to think I'm really nosy. I want to know what your day's like. What time are you getting up? What time are you eating or not eating? When are your classes? When are your five-minute breaks? When are your lunches? All that kind of stuff. I need to know if you're traveling by car, by bus, because I need to figure out your schedule to implement when and what you're going to eat. Timing is really, really crucial, for sure. Does it matter if you have to have, like, set up meal times or just kind of break through your like, kind of eat throughout the day? You, you'll need to bring a lot of food and plan for the unplanned. And that's why I say to every single person that I work with, you need to get a thermal bag and some ice packs and you can keep everything. For some of you, this will be like maybe one meal that you'll fit in here. So you need to consider what kind of bag you have. Right? So this here is gonna be a lot more beneficial versus just something that only fits that's cool. so much, right? Superstore, like five bucks, really not, not, not. This is, But that's why you guys need some skills, and I'm not gonna do this with you guys, but um, I, I do work with teams, and we do have cooking classes, and I show them how to prepare high-protein pancakes, um, how to do quick snacks and meal ideas, because you have to take control. Mom and dad don't know what you need. You don't even know what you need until you start paying attention. I'll give you guidelines. But some of you, depending on your goals for the timing of your training, your periodization of training, some of you are going to be more and some of you are going to be a little less in terms of what you need. It depends on the training level and it depends on what your goals are in that training level. So you've got to really fine tune. And this is a great time right now to start figuring that out. At the national level when I'm working with some athletes, some of them are just starting this. And just think how they could be if they would have got this at your level. So it's really, really important to, to look at that. And in terms of guidelines, I mean, I can give you numbers, but it's not going to mean a heck of a lot to you until next session. But really, in terms of what you need in a day, back it in some textbooks or some, some uh, information that's out there, it's a little incorrect. They'll say you need about 50 to 65% of your total calories from carbohydrates. We don't use that anymore because especially for female athletes, you won't meet your carbohydrate needs if we did that. So for carbs, most of you would need, probably for the females, six to seven grams of carbs per kg of body weight. For the guys, seven to eight grams. 
So if what that means is I'll just do a quick little math. Does someone want to tell me your weight? 150. 150. So 150, I'm just going to turn that into kilograms. So that's 68.18 kg body weight times. So if you're in intense training, new program, high level, um, then I'm going to times that by at least 7 grams of carbs. So you're going to need 477 grams of carbs a day. Just so you have an idea, a medium-sized potato, 15 grams. A slice of bread, 15 to 20 grams. A large banana, 30 grams. It's going to depend on your weight, your current weight. But time, but uh, 477. So that means you really have to pay attention to have enough. So you need four hundred and seventy-seven dollars packed up so you can get what you need. Yes. What's healthy fats? Healthy fats? Yeah. Things like um, nuts and seeds. Walnuts have the highest amount of omega threes out of all of your uh, nuts and seeds. Nut butters, almond butter, peanut butter, olive oil, canola oil, coconut oil, sunflower seed oil. Fish has healthy fats in there. <laughs> Here's this is textbook knowledge. You know what I'll do? I'll email this um, presentation to your to your coach, and uh, you guys can all have a copy. I don't really care. It's all information I stole from somewhere. So um, this is textbook guidelines in terms of eating. Now that said, you have to go with how you are as an individual. I know with some some of the swimmers I've worked with, 6 a.m. in the pool, they don't eat breakfast. They have sport drink on the side so they can sip on that throughout their training session, and they have their recovery snack. So immediately after they're out of the pool, they recover, and then they go home and have breakfast. So when I develop a meal plan, it's not breakfast, snack, lunch. It's meal one, meal two, meal three, meal four, all the way up to meal six to eight. So you have to figure out what works for you. But these are general guidelines in terms of how much food you consume at one time before going and training. So here are some complex carbohydrates. These are foods that are going to keep you feeling fuller longer. They have fiber. Some of them even have some protein in there, quinoa or quinoa, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. That will have double the protein as rice compared to rice and pasta, but it is a grain. Your sprouted grains, again, more nutritional value. You want to look for not just calories, but nutritional value. Very important to get these in. These are not the only foods to eat, though. So it's kind of known as an ancient grain. And these grains have a lot more nutrition, less processed than, than a lot of other grains that you'll get. So looking at your superfoods. Find which ones you like and make sure they're in your meal plan. If you don't like broccoli, don't eat broccoli. But find the ones that you do like and make sure they are in your nutrition plan. If you had, if you took your uh, hand and had and cupped it, if you had that twice a day, that's a good start in terms of how much you need. If you're thinking of your main meals, let's say lunch and supper, if you did this, it's not real sign language, but just play along. This would be your meat and alternative. This would be your starch or your grain. This would be your vegetable. If you did that at least twice a day, you're on your way. It's not going to set you up for everything, but it's a starting point. It's not really cool to bring out measuring cups when you're out with people, right? So please just do that. Here's a breakfast. I did this in um, several cooking classes. It's called Power Muesli. Why? Because I have to get people's attention instead of just saying it's oats and fruit, right? So power muesli, you, if you don't have time to make breakfast in the morning, that's fine. You make it the night before. And this is taking whole oats and you don't have to cook. So those of you that don't like cooking, I don't like cooking either, which is kind of weird because I'm a dietitian, but I don't like cooking. So if I can get around that, I will. This here, if the night before, you take your uncooked oats and you're gonna add milk or almond milk or soy beverage, whatever you like. You're going to mix those together, cinnamon, nutmeg, and then you're going to keep that overnight in the fridge. In the morning, you'll take it out, and you can add in your dried fruits. You can even add this in the night before, too. Um, maybe a little bit of yogurt. I like the Greek yogurt, higher protein content, and uh, some nuts and seeds on top of that. And if you need more fuel on the side, you don't have to put it in. Maybe one or two hard-boiled eggs, and you're good to go. Half a breakfast, half a morning snack. 
But in any case, you can do this the night before. Ultimate smoothie. What makes it ultimate is I want your attention. That's it. So, um, and the fact that it has 17 grams of protein and no protein powder, 50 grams of carbs, 2 grams of fat, and 4 grams of fiber. If you need a little kick, add a little bit of leftover green tea into it to give you a little bit of that, but otherwise, it's a basic smoothie, but you're making sure that, you're, that you can drink it down. Make it the night before, stick it in the fridge, right? Pour it in a coffee travel mug, and you're drinking on your way. Protein and food will work out dudes. Protein intake is really important, but it's not just are you getting enough protein in the day, because most of you are. Unless you're a vegetarian, especially a vegan, then we might need to really focus in on, on some nutrition practices. But um, for most North Americans, you're getting enough protein in your diet. Even non-athletes are getting as much as an athlete needs. The difference for you guys is the timing of it. The timing and what, not are you an endurance athlete, but what are you doing in your training? Some of your training might be more cardio. Other training sessions might be more strength-based. So you have to look at what level, is it a new program? What type of training are you doing right now? And that's gonna determine how much protein you need. So most of you, based on your age, would be, would be about a 1.5 to 2 grams per kg of body weight. So again, for the 150 pounds, I did it on 1.6, so that'd be about 110 grams of protein a day. And you can do it all through food sources. If you're going to use protein powders, you, you can, but you definitely can meet all of your requirements without going to supplements. So I'm just going to show you a little something. I, I don't expect you to really be excited about this slide, but I'm going to explain it. Uh, coaches will appreciate it. In terms of protein, timing is everything. So the white is where uh, the where the athlete is taking protein just before and just after, an hour before and an hour after training. And then the black is only having protein in the morning and only having protein for like a night meal. So lean, LBM, lean body mass, definitely increased when you had protein an hour and a protein after a training session. Fat mass decreased and your percent body fat decreased. So timing of your protein intake is really, really important. Not did you get your three servings of meat alternatives in, but when did you get them in? Very important for you guys. And here's another one in terms of bench press, squat, and deadlift. You can see by having that protein an hour before, an hour after, the strength gains were really seen. So making sure that you're not just neglecting the timing. Are you getting enough? Probably, but are you getting it at the right time? Does that make sense? You guys are okay. So within 15 to 30 minutes, for sure focus on carbs after a workout. But at least within an hour, get some protein in. All right. Do you guys have any questions on protein? How about you? You're good? Don't want to exclude anyone. All right, someone was talking about fat before. And I think it's really important that you know that you have to have fat. If you don't have fat in your diet, you're not going to absorb nutrients from these foods. There's certain vitamins that are fat soluble. And in order for them to work in your body, you need fat in your diet. Now, I'm not saying go to McDonald's or wherever and get fat. Um, but you do want to make sure you include healthy fats in your meal plan. So there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And obviously, the good ones are going to be um, unsaturated fats. Saturated fat is animal fat. Trans fat, what are trans fats? It's always in the news. What are trans fats? Besides the fact that we know they, they can kill us. Um, trans fats is what keeps food shelf stable in the store for a long period of time. So if you're sometimes buying certain types of crackers or certain baked goods, they'll have the trans fat added to them to keep them lasting longer on the shelf. So when you go buy them, they seem fresh, right? So a lot of companies 
kids are changing that, but you still should be aware of making good fat choices. So here's a list of, not an end-all be all, but a decent list of what fats you should be looking for to keep you healthy. Your immune system, your brain function, um, in terms of absorbing nutrients, keeping you feeling fuller longer, fat is really important in your meal plan. So yeah, nut butters can be almond butter, peanut butter. There's all different types. I've tried the sunflower seed butter. It's a little heavy, not a huge fan, but almond butter, peanut butter, those ones are great. Fluid. I, I just really want to emphasize again to you guys, hydration is major. It's pretty much one of the main reasons for poor performance in any sport. So you need to make sure that you stay hydrated for a lot of reasons. But as little as um, you know, one percent weight loss in a, in training or in competition can decrease performance significantly, up to about three percent, and that could be a deal breaker for you guys. So make sure that that you get used to drinking. Um, if your pee is the color of oh, I don't know. I said a gym floor once, but someone said their gym floor was blue, so that really didn't help me out. But um, if it's, you know, kind of like these colors, that's not a good thing. That's a sign of dehydration. Now, you, some of you might be like that first thing in the morning. Now, this is where you do your pee test. When you wake up in the morning, so you've been sleeping, hopefully, at least seven and a half, eight hours. That's pretty much what you guys need as a minimum. So you've been sleeping. Most of you are not you know, going and making gourmet sandwiches in your sleep. I've had two clients that do that kind of thing. Um, but most people don't. So most of you are sleeping, so you're, you're, you're in a fasting, fasting phase when you're sleeping. You're not eating, you're not drinking, so you're losing fluid through breathing, respiration. When you wake up in the morning after that, those seven, eight hours, stumble into the bathroom and go pee. And then I need you to take a peek. Share it with your friends or not, up to you. But when you take a peek, check out the color of it. If it's like this, well, you know what, if you've been dehydrated, you didn't hydrate well the, the day before, and it's this color, whatever, start hydrating. If it's like this midday, that's not good. You're not hydrating enough. So you need to make sure you're drinking enough fluid. And it shouldn't be crystal clear, but you do need to make sure that it's a light color, and that's, a, that's one sign. So you look at the color. Um, you need to make sure that uh, you're in color. You need to look at you know, how much water you're consuming in a day. Look at your weight as a measurement of fluid loss. If you're losing five pounds in one day, that's fluid loss. And that's a lot of fluid to lose in one day. So making sure that, that you're looking at everything. So what types of fluids can you incorporate? Tons. If you're used to drinking tea and coffee, it counts as fluid. If you're not, you feel like you have to pee more often, so that's a diuretic. It makes you lose fluid. So watch that. Flavored waters are fine. I do need you guys to know that things like Crystal Light, those sort of, or vitamin waters, those are not sport drinks. What's the difference between Crystal Light and Gatorade? It's the sugar. Why do people drink Crystal Light? Why would say your parents drink Crystal Light? Because there's no calories. They want, they want the sweet flavor without calories. So that's why they consume it. So there's no carbohydrate. A sport drink needs to have carbohydrate in there. So Crystal Light does not work for that. Um, and what about vitamin waters? Any of you have a vitamin water on hand? Thanks. <laughs> Is that bad? Oh, sorry. There's no shame. Okay. Very important that you guys know how to read labels. That's another session all on its own, Label Reading 101, but uh, you need to take a look. And basically, it's a bunch of vitamins and minerals. And um, there's typically a little bit of a recommendation here. Oh, yeah, it says adult dosage. <laughs> right? And uh, there's so many young kids that are, that are drinking these. It's, and it's probably not a big deal at your age to have one, but there is a maximum dosage for adults. So it's going to be even lower for this age group, okay? And it's not a sport drink. So you need to keep that mind. And if you're taking supplements, you're taking a multivitamin mineral supplement and some other supplements, um, plus this, you want to make sure that you're not going 
overboard in any vitamin and minerals. For example, niacin, a B vitamin, in an overdose can actually cause irreversible nerve damage. Not so great for an athlete, right? So be careful in terms of how much supplementation you're taking in, even from something like this. So adult dosage. Is the adult mic? If you need something other than just water, and I understand water can be kind of boring all day long, um, this is how much fluid some of you are losing in a training session. And you need to replace one and a half of these to become rehydrated. So if you're tired of water, just go half, half water, half juice. Dilute it a little bit. And then that way you can save money, which your parents might like, or they might not care, I don't know depending on your family. But um, then at least you have a hint of flavor and, and you can add whatever kind of juice that you want to. I even have a, a sport drink that you can make out of Kool-Aid if you need to. Pennies a glass, right? So you just you might be getting some dyes or whatever, but, but it is an option. Again, energy drinks, not a fan. I already talked about that to you guys. I'm not going to go over that again unless you have more questions about it. But really figure out what fluids you're going to incorporate into your meal plan. Milk, juice, soup, smoothies, all of that counts as fluid intake. And fluid intake really is individual. Most of you without exercise need about eight to 10 cups of fluid a day. That's without exercise. When you're training, which is exercise, you're gonna to need to increase that more. And that's why weigh yourself before and after you can figure out what your actual sport hydration needs are. This here just gives you a bit of an idea in terms of caffeine content. You can go to Health Canada and figure out, based on your age, um, what are the recommendations not to go above. There's never a recommendation as a you need this much caffeine a day, but um, in terms of maximum doses. So. Bottom line, Sport Nutrition 101. You need to fuel, you need to fuel your body throughout the day, not just one massive meal at the end of the day. You need to hydrate, and again, throughout the day, so whenever there's a break at school, if you have your own water bottle, if you use the water fountain, I don't know, making sure that you're sipping on fluid throughout, even when you're at school, because that's hydrating you for that practice or that game. You need to make sure that you're, you go in hydrated and well-fueled so that we have a quality training session. And then you need to make sure you have proper rest and recovery. And the higher the level you go, the more that these are deal breakers for you if you're not making sure they're in place. All right. So again, I talked to, before I used the protein example that supplements are there if you need them. I'm not against supplementation, but when you take a supplement, it only gives you one piece of the puzzle. It's not a complete puzzle. So calcium, you take a calcium supplement, you're getting Calcium. You have milk. Look at everything that you're getting. You're getting a ton of nutrients, and uh, and it, plus, it's going to fill you up. You take a supplement. It's not. You're not going to get energy from vitamins. Vitamins do not give energy. Energy is calories. You need food to give you calories, which then is used as energy. So vitamins, vitamin water, will not give you energy. Just keep that in mind. Um, I did talk about iron before, but it is important for you to know, even guys have had male athletes that have been anemic, low iron stores, making sure that you are getting tested at least yearly, get a, your blood tested, or um, if you have been anemic in the past every six months. That can be a huge, huge impact in terms of how you play. Portion sizes, you're wondering about servings, again, the serving sizes on Canada's food guide are still the same servings for you guys, but you might need more in a day. So just to get used to it, and again, like I said before, to bring measuring cups with you when you go out, it's not really cool. So just to have some other ways of judging and gauging what a serving is. For example, a computer mouse, baked potato, right? That kind of thing. So just figure out, those of you that like chocolate, um, what the little um, floss containers, if you have a square of dark chocolate, at night, and that's something that you want for, for a treat, one or two squares, fantastic, that can be incorporated. 
plate method. Again, if that's going to be a meal, you do need to eat. Most of you eat more than that, so that's why snacks come into play. You should be having about three to four snacks, three main meals. <coughs> and then goal setting. I know that A for me is a lot different than what other people use in terms of their uh, acronym for SMART goal setting. But when you leave here today, I would really want to encourage you and challenge you to work on one thing for the next uh, you know, couple weeks. You might want to set one new goal a week. It's up to you. But when you set a goal, let's say your vegetables and fruit, your superfoods, are not anywhere close to where they should be, set a goal and be specific. Don't say I'm going to eat more, because how do you measure that? Is eating more eating two more peas off your plate? I don't know, right? So you have to be really specific in terms of what that is, when it's going to happen. Are you going to have vegetables at breakfast? Well, most of us aren't. You could, but most of you are not. So be specific in terms of where you're going to have them. Action. They need to be purchased, they need to be prepared, and you need to eat them. Is your goal realistic to have four servings of vegetables a day? Is that realistic to you? I don't know. You tell me. Maybe you're going to start with two a day, work your way up to four a day, and time limited. You've got to check in. So this smart goal setting can be used in any area in life, but I do use it in nutrition planning as well. So quick review. All right. So why are you going to eat and drink before training or before a game? Optimal fluid intake, hydration. You need to look at high carbohydrate at that time. Moderate protein, low fat, because you need it to break down quickly. That makes sense? So here are some ideas, depending on what meal or snack it is, that is considered your pre-event, pre-training, pre-comp meal. It might be the power muesli, depending on what time of day it is, or it might be a sub sandwich. There's some other ideas. I make, um, it sounds gross, but I've made them for like tons of people before, including 70 men at a Diageo plant. They're called um, chocolate chip white kidney bean cookies, and they can be used as a breakfast cookie, as a recovery cookie. Um, so that could be part of your nutrition plan. Chocolate milk and a couple of those cookies, and it's recovery. Great. So during, you want to look at fluid and electrolytes and carbohydrates. Maintain your blood sugar levels, maintain electrolyte levels, fluid balance, and you're going to have a way better training session. You're going to have better concentration. Your coach is going to be able to give you direction without you thinking that he or she's coming down on you. So really um, eating and drinking during this time is really important. And for recovery, again, what's that window of opportunity? The first 15, 15. 15 to 30 minutes. Get that in. So that means you got to bring it with you that travel. So afterwards, it depends it, if it's going to be more of a snack versus a supper or a breakfast. That's going to be depending on your schedule. You go to coach.ca, free resources, some meal ideas for before, during, and after training. So you can go there and get some information as well. And you can tell none of these are hard to make. You guys can all do this. What's the perfect post recovery drink? You guys are so smart. <laughs> and if you don't like chocolate milk, another thing that's great to carry with you. Um, some of you might like soy beverage, and you can get them in little juice box sizes. They travel really well. You don't have to refrigerate them until after they're open. But because you're opening it and drinking that one cup worth right away, it's not a problem. Yes? Is chocolate milk made out of milk and chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't like... It's 1% milk yeah. with added chocolate. <laughs> you can make your own, you can buy it already made. If you don't want to be chocolate, I don't really care. It's the extra carb that you're getting. So it could be strawberry flavored, vanilla flavored, I don't really care. As long as you're getting it. Now, how many of you guys like almond milk? Have you tried almond breeze milk? It's really good, but it doesn't have the protein content. So that's where if you were using almond milk instead, you would need to add about half a scoop of protein powder or have another protein option. Have um, Greek yogurt with some berries and, and maybe some granola on top. And that could be a recovery. It doesn't have to be chocolate milk. So I'm not going to talk too much about, um, let's see where we are at the time. I'm not going to go into too much detail about traveling, but you do need to know that when you do travel, 
when you eat, it, when you go to, oftentimes athletes go to buffets, especially teams, so just money-wise it makes sense, but keep in mind buffet does not mean free for all. Oh. And, uh, because, again, what, what's the difference between you and your competition? What I suggest, and even if you're eating in a restaurant, is if you're in a restaurant, you scan the, the menu, and then you order from the menu, but not off the menu. You just switch things up a little bit. You scan everything on that um, table in terms of all the food items, if it, and you make the best choices. You don't have to eat every, everything there. If you're at, say, like a games scenario, you know what, it's a cycle menu. It's gonna show up again in a few days. Don't worry about it. So you don't have to eat everything in sight. Just make the best choices. Remember, make sure you got your protein, your carb or starch, and your vegetable. So that's kind of your starting point. When you're traveling, bring snacks with you. If you're traveling by plane or, or by bus or in any way, you have to hydrate. You're gonna have to get up and go pee, yes, which is okay. You need to get up and move around anyway but you need to stay well hydrated. That's gonna prevent that jet lag feeling when you get off. Again, it's the difference between you and your competition. So you need to hydrate throughout that travel time and you should have either a meal or a snack two to three hours before you get off that, that travel, just to perk you up. So that's really, really important to do. This is a saying that one of my instructors for the IOC program had and uh, you can put in whatever, you can have a athlete, doesn't have to be dancer, um, but a great nutrition plan will not make an average athlete elite. However, a poor nutrition plan can make an elite athlete average. Okay, so take it up to the next level. Questions? <laughs> Where are you going to start? If I, I'm going to point out a few of you, one goal for, for the next week. What are you going to do? So think about it. Because I don't need to Oh, I have a question. Say on like a Saturday and you wake up at 12, does that mean you have to have two meals to do miss breakfast? Or do you no, just... usually it's going to be more like a brunch idea, right? Okay, so yeah. it is kind of a two in one? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's your, do you have a goal? Not yet? <laughs> All right, so if anyone want to share uh, a goal or two that they're going to work on, or do I need to point? I'm okay pointing, I do it all the time. <laughs> All right, how about um, I'll start, uh, please, eye contact immediately goes away. How about... Um... Jenny Lynn. What's Start with Jenny Lynn. Jenny Lynn? Jenny Lynn, yeah. All right, who's Jenny Lynn? She's the one hiding there right there. Um, <laughs> Jenny! <laughs> what, what's one thing you're going to work on? Uh, I'll throw out some examples for you and everyone else cannot choose the one that you chose, okay? So are you going to make sure that you're going to bring your, your water bottle and sport drink in training and drink every 20 minutes if you can? Are you go, or are you going to make sure you bring your recovery snack with you so you have it before you that one. Okay, so cool. For the week, everybody that, that trains with her, you, you guys can judge her. And if she does not bring her recovery snack with her and, and eats and or drinks it before she leaves, then she hasn't met that goal. Okay, I like that. Perfect. And then, Specific is what you're going to make sure you bring, right? Carbohydrate for sure, maybe a little bit of protein. It's up to you. Okay, who else? Peppers. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna point. Do you want to throw out a name? Uh, Casey Blank. Casey. I already told her I didn't. Think of one. One thing. I've thrown a bunch. What's one thing that you're going to work on? More water. More water when? All day. All day. So what are you gonna do? I like this. Use more 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 water throughout the day. What are you gonna do to make sure that happens? Have a water bottle with you. Have a water bottle with you. Excellent. I had one one athlete who actually used their stopwatch and it would beep every time they should have one to two gulps of their water. So you know do what you need to do to get that into the habit. Good. What's another name? Who else? Emily Potter. Emily. Uh, 
Thanks. Probably like a, a, a lunch supper idea. Good. You know, if you had a fist of baby carrots, there's two out of the four servings right there. You had it for a snack. It doesn't have to be at a particular meal. And you've had two servings, right? So, good. I like that. All right, one more person. Shaquille Nichols. Yeah, the guy in the back. Shaquille All right. Nichols. Yeah. Let's see. What's that? What's that? Meals a day. No, Eat more meals a day. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? That's, that is a huge one. And, and it kind of combines everything. But how are you going to do that? I would plan today for tomorrow. So get, it um, doesn't have to be like a fancy food diary or anything like that, but write out your schedule tonight. Write out your schedule for tomorrow. What's happening? What time are you getting up? What's happening? And then you plan your meals and snacks around that. That is a perfect starting point for sure. And then you're going to gauge if it was too much or too little. And, and go from there. Okay, any more questions? Sport nutrition plan. Those of you that, that we didn't make share, you're lucky this time. Um, do you guys feel like you got something today? Yeah. Because if not, you need to ask, otherwise I'm gonna blame you. I'll leave here fine, because I know what I'm talking about. But if you leave here not getting anything out of it, I'm gonna blame you. What, do you guys have any more questions right now? It's kind of a lot thrown in an afternoon, but. So what's good to eat before a game if you want to be energetic? Um, what time is the game? Say like seven. Seven in the evening, yeah. I'm assuming. So I would look at having supper around five, a typical supper, and and also making sure that the meals beforehand were good. But but by five o'clock, that gives you about two hours, right? Um, or if you need more time, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and that, make sure you have good protein choice, a lean meat or an alternative to meat, those of you who don't eat meat, making sure you've got your vegetables, um, making sure that um, you also have your, your other carbohydrate source, so it could be potatoes or rice or pasta, and having an amount that, you, that and it's going to be played by ear. If I was working one-on-one, -on -one, I would calculate your, your weight and, and how many grams you need um, you know, before and for recovery phase. But to start with, try eating a balanced meal two hours beforehand. And then also make sure that you bring a small snack up just in case um, a schedule might change on you for a game. You might need a small snack while waiting and then making sure that you have your recovery snack with you. But go to coach.ca free resources on there to get some sack and meal ideas or um, uh, bring some more questions with you because we will be meeting again whether you want to or not and I'm going to help you guys develop that sport nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, I know you're pretty cool, I can just tell. I just can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So, why did you only have two hours of sleep? Exams. Yeah. Exams. Okay. So, if it wasn't for for and I don't, it's not a stupid reason, but if it wasn't for like like a reason like exams, I think I'd say you guys need to prioritize. And I know at your age, it's really a lot to put on you guys to say, hey, you know what? I can't hang out tonight because I've got a game tomorrow morning. It at some point you're going to have to do that. Right now, I don't know if all of you are ready to do that, but it will make a huge difference. I would say try to get that sleep. If you didn't, unfortunately, that's going to impact you. It's just like going into a game or training session dehydrated. And pretty much what you're saying to your coach is, you know what, I'm here for a, a portion uh, of what I want to be. So it is going to be challenging, exams or not. So whatever the reason is, I know some of you like to be what I call festive. Um, I really challenge you to kind of uh, be cautious. The other area that I didn't talk about today, but it's something that, that um, I'm not blind to, is alcohol. And in terms of alcohol, you guys probably have had the talk before, but just in terms of sport performance wise, never mind age, which I'm not condoning anyone under the age of 18 to drink, but just sport performance wise, it, 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 alcohol is not a stimulant, it's a depressant. But what it does is it interrupts your proper sleep pattern. So during normal hours of when you've got this human growth hormone and everything helping build muscle to help repair during that sleep hour, actually drinking alcohol prevents that from happening. Okay, so already you're not in that recovery phase. 
and it does impact if you're drinking, you know, anywhere from four to six drinks a night, and the, ne the next, you know, 38 hours or so are going to be affected. If you want to find out more details, um, there, there is some information on coach.ca in terms of alcohol and sport performance. So that's something else to consider, you guys. Debt, not just I'm saying in terms of morals or legal reasons, but sport performance-wise. There are reasons why you're, you're going to actually say, hey guys, you know what I know you guys are hanging out being festive, which one of you like the word, um, but I, I just can't. Yeah. So just keep in mind that proper sleep is important. There's no amount of food that's gonna, yet even caffeine will not, will not be the long lasting form of energy. Reco rest and recovery is just as important as any other piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Well, if you play a game and you have an hour and a half game break, can you have another game? So if you have a game, you have an hour and a half break between the next game. Sometimes people say, oh, that's an hour and a half to, to actually eat and digest a meal. Not if you're leaving the site and going to order. You might only have 20 minutes. By the time you get the food, you have to be back. So what I've suggested is to some teams is you have big coolers and and maybe have either sandwiches delivered or um, some some of the team members might be what I say are nutrition leaders for the team, and they make sure that um, sandwiches are made in advance and they're all brought and they're in the cooler so that way you guys have it right on site and you have that hour to at least eat and digest and you know, kind of meet together as a team. And teams eating together tend to keep an eye on each other. So it, it is a way of just making sure everyone is being more balanced instead of going off and having um, a Baconator. You know, which I'm not saying you can never have, but think, think of the timing of, and why are you choosing to develop a sport nutrition plan in the, in the first place. So I, I would really suggest that if, when you can have meals and snacks on site, have team coolers if there's no fridge that you guys are able to use. Bring your own coolers with you so that way you can fill it with ice. And, and also, um, coolers are a great idea for cooling. Even if you're drinking enough fluid, some of you, your bodies just don't sweat enough, so you actually, your body heats up too much. So having a cooler with ice and having some towels in there, you put the towel around you, can help cool down the body temperature, and that will help you perform well in your game too. Lots of things we can talk about in sport nutrition is. Just uh, this time frame is just a start. But planning for the unplanned, what if, what if now you you have um, less time or more time? So bring things with you. A team cooler is ideal, so you have you have more room. But uh, someone has to take that role on in organizing that, and it can't be just the coach. You guys have to take that part. <laughs> Good questions. I know you want to go. I'll let you go right away. <laughs> It's okay. Any other questions, comments from the athletes, from the coaching? Or, I don't know who's all here actually. I'm assuming this coaching staff. You, so you guys have one goal you're going to work on. If you share it with somebody, it's more likely to happen. So I'd encourage you to do that. Um, otherwise, if more questions come up, write them down. And next time when we meet, I'll answer those questions as well as I will help you guys figure out your sport nutrition plan. But remember, you need a calculator. You need pen and pencil and some paper. Next okay? week? No, um, it's happening in uh, it's about three weeks. Three weeks. All right.